Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me back here in Tiano the last of your which we're playing as everyone's favorite Matsushita Matsushita Masaharu Well, maybe not everyone's favorite Matsushita, but the triumvirate of reputation uh, Shimamoto Katashi stood upon one of the docks of Port Shori preparing to board a ferry back to the home islands Ticket already in hand the opportunity to visit each of the famed three pearls due to the business trip his experience is forever ingrained in his mind he recalled the day he stepped off the ferry onto the pavements of Koshu. Dark plumes of smoke could be spied in the distance, emanating from the hundreds of factories which dotted Koshu's perimeters. He had a chance to set his eyes upon the interior of the manufacturing plant, the back, back of breaking toil of the Chinese workers, and the long hours which he was told of shocked him. The insane profits which the factories would generate he could not even comprehend, truly. It was a miracle of sheer efficiency, something which created unimaginable quantities of wealth. The crowded streets of Little Macau were drastically different here. Instead of high-rises and production units, casinos and gambling houses dominated the area, wrecking importance from unlucky men who could not win the favor of the goddess Fortuna. Uh, the incessant ga gaming in every corner of the comp uh, compact city made an impression upon Shimamoto. The vast amounts of cash and assets being lost in every dash and spin of the roulette wheel, making him wonder how much of the beneficiaries must possess, an empire built upon to, uh, the allure of chance. Hong Kong was thus sensational now. Row upon row of towering complexes, housing, businesses, relating to finance and accounting. That skyline dominated by, by banks and white-collar firms. Still, one must wonder just how much wealth flows through the very veins of the city. A marvel of economics and commerce, as the ferry sounded its horn, signaling for boarding. Shimamoto took one last glance at the people and buildings of the strange land, a place he would remember deeply. Farewell. But, right now, <clears throat> we are doing a of sprawling surroundings. The three pearls are undoubtedly our greatest and serious heirs, pride. Brilliant or radiant cities that serve as a glowing and continuous example of economic prosperity in Guangdong's prowess in the sphere. However, the cities certainly have issues. They're poorly planned to maintain residential urban sprawl that has been allowed to spread house millions of citizens and workers, though not exactly liabilities that provides living space for men serving in the industry. Certainly need some assistance to prevent the brewing of discontent. Efficiency investment ordinance. <coughs> now comes the time for Matsushita to present his second bill to the Legislation Council. The Efficiency Investment Ordinance Bill will secure funds for Matsushita's development of Guangdong, funds that have to be justified to the Council. The Legislation Council need much convincing if we are to obtain the money and grants needed for Matsushita's plans. If the money is ne we need is secured and used effectively. We will have gained the trust of many of the Guangdong's industry and political leaders. If we fail, it will all be for the more difficult for Matsushita to carry out his plan for the country. Which we don't... We actually, we do have enough seats. 56 seats already! That's actually pretty good. Undercurrents. As Matsushita Masaharu sat in his office, listening to a report from his factional whip, uh, his felt trepidation rise from somewhere deep within him. The grinning wretch from Komai had been busy with Hitachi's money, the team. The whip was reporting that many late-night meetings and brown paper bag changing hands, with Hitachi representatives entering the offices of high-ranking Kenpai Tai officers and not coming up for hours. According to the whip, this has been going on for weeks now with no sign of abating. The results, as far as I could tell, consisted solely of an uptick in legislative council seats and an emerging pro-Hitachi sentiment among the military. Hitachi was getting favorable amendments tacked onto routine ordinances, but seemingly nothing more. After the long, whip, long after the whip had left his office, Masushita Masaharu found himself wondering what it all meant. Hitachi was putting some serious money into this, whatever this was, and Komai was clearly bringing all his unsavory towns to bear, but why? Were they going to propose an ordinance, make a bid for Japanese contracts? Surely whatever they were planning, it cannot be possibly justify the lengths that they were going to, in order to make it happen. The rats come up from under the floorboards. God, are you kidding me? Bruh. I just said we had enough seats. And we still do. But god dang it. Bruh. Oh, no, 54. We lost three seats, but we only lost two. I'm not going to complain then. But I, actually, I know I'm still going to complain. So we decrease Japanese expat support. We'll get more growth and a little more debt, but whatever. It's, it's worth it in the end. Uh, what is corruption actually currently at? That's kind of an interesting question to ask. Um, oh, look nice. Because uh, we do have the product cycle coming on in about uh, two and a half months. Uh, we can audit the police. Ooh, the police of Guangdong is inefficient due to being particularly susceptible to corruption. Chief Executive Matsushita already clearly knows of this, and he has proposed doing a mass audit of police officers to reprimand and fire the ones who have been engaging in corrupt activities. Ooh, this is different. I'm not used to this one. Increases Chinese government support, decreases Zhujin and Japanese expat support, but get more police control. I'll try it. Why not? So, relentless innovation. What Guangdong needs most is innovation. Everywhere and everything has room for improvement, and we must close the gap. Oh god. Uh, as much as possible, whatever possible. To that end, our methods and equipment must be constantly assessed for any flaws and any inefficiencies that can be resolved further. We must improve our research facilities in order to maximize the potential for new innovators and return on investment. By the time the debates on efficiency investment ordinance had ended, and the smoke had cleared, two amendments worth discussing remain, as usual. They came from Ibuka and Morita, as usual. Matsushita was left with a choice of which to sign off on. Ibuka focused on investing in machinery and the dependable component of the industrial world. 
As he explained it, these machines were the true innovation that led to Guangdong, and if he was to grow into new markets, it would need new machinery and equal measures. As he Ibuka imagined, uh, Guangdong that invested in its machinery would be the Guangdong ready to blast into the next decade, poised to conquer the 70s while competitors crumbled. We're ready to focus, though, on investing in experience, a crucial component of the industrial world. The people of China needed to become more than simple contracted hands, but valuable assets to the factory just like the machines they utilize. If the worker understood points of failure, understood the basic operation, they could avoid the shutdowns and turnover that seemed to plague Guangdong. As Muida imagined it, a Guangdong that invested in the people would be a safer, more secure state, one steadily operational even in its worst hour. Of course, Matsushita had no imagination for either outcome, but in the end, they needed, the need to choose came all the same. Innovation. Move human capital, individual productivity, machinery, and industrial technology. We don't need any more seats. The challengers. Oh, I've read this one before. We have 43 seats in total. Are you kidding me? If you want to buy this, please go ahead. Bruh. So right now, if we do this, we get more Zujin and Japanese expat support, get more growth, and industrial equipment will begin to improve. I kind of wish we could see, I mean, this is for the individuals, which I don't mind opening up the individuals, but... Like, this uh, does say it adds more Matsushita uh, seats as well. Human capital and individual productivity. Industrial technology. Well, I guess we'll go with this one, just because... Oh, but machinery. I mean, this is us, and we should support ourselves, right? Is everyone supporting us? I mean, we're so close. It, do, it literally does not matter. We'll go with human capital for now, too. So we do that one. Um, we, industrial expertise goes up as well. Get a little more cost, but get increased Chinese and Zhujin support. So I can't fault that one too much. Actually, I can, but whatever. We're at 15%, which sucks. Because I want it less than zero, but, you know, we're working on it. Happy 1965, though, everybody. We get two, over two political power day, which is nice. Um, what else do we have here? Two months left. I don't want to spend any more political power because we need to keep it, but at the same time, I kind of want to keep working on this, too. It's only 25. It barely goes up, but, you know, it is what it is. 46%. 57% is actually pretty good. Hey, look. If you would like to read about advancements in household electronics technology, please go right ahead. But a couple comments included. It seems you've chosen Masashita's path, but I wouldn't mind you playing him anyways. However, his path is about trying to uh, prove his father that he's more than just a black sheep. But he can turn into a puppet for Morita and Ibuka if you can compromise with him too much. So, let's see if you can prove Masashita's worthy to his father. Uh, oh god. I've read this before, too. In Koshu, Yakuza counted their earnings from the street, protection, fraud, and a hundred other crimes. In Hong Kong, bags of opium flow through the streets like water in the Pearl River, bringing poisonous comfort to the masses. In Macau, millions change hands in seconds with the reveal of a single t title. With the Silicon years in full swing, business in all sectors of Guangdong boom, a careful dance is being played between the forces of order and crime as tries and Yakuza dance and fight in the underworld. Below the feet of all law-abiding citizens, from the lowly laborer to the chief executive to himself, there lies corruption. God dang it. Oh, that's really not good. I would keep that sport. I don't want any Kenpai Tai over here. Or at least less. I want the police. Macau. Communist Union Pai? Oh, less than worth taking. China have been one of the one to gun for more opportunities at his job. In a world like Guangdong, <clears throat> I seem best to stay out of the way of the foreman. To avoid the dangers and opportunity might provide, yet the factory seemed uh, uh, to be changing. Perhaps now it time come to uh, examine his work further. Chun walked over to the message board near the factory's back entrance. Previously nearly empty, it was now filled to the brim with possible courses, seminars, and investment schemes. Some about learning to handle your new tools, others about learning new skills. Yes, uh, most of it seemed hollow. Empty lessons were basic cons. <coughs> Chun noticed one flyer featuring a drawing of a man in an engineer's hat holding a paper above it. In large Chinese letters it read, Learn to work safe. In a fine print, it clarified its purpose. This was a series of seminars on getting qualification on all of the machines in this factory. This might be something real, Chun thought to himself. Chun already knew how to work his machine, of course. After years of working on it, Chun could work it as safely as anyone else could. The real benefit was in the possibility of promotion. After the newest ordinance, the factory was looking for supervisors and even accepting Chinese laborers for the role. With any luck, he'd be away from the accidents and the mutilations of the assembly line. He'd be watching them happen instead. <coughs> hey, more Zushin support's not bad. More growth, good. Um, so, what's next? Adopt new subcontractors, new sales. Ooh. Ooh, we probably want to do this one first. It's necessary to connect to our markets, uh, consumers as such. We must be making our products seem palatable and conductive to their needs as much as possible. To the same, we'll embark on an advertisement campaign across, all across the corners of Guangdong. Posters will align uh, the streets, films dominate the TV screens, and so much more. A heavy investment will be required at first, though uh, our projections say that this should be successful. It will inevitably lead to higher spending and economic growth. Yes. As a... Economy's fortunes go, so do Matsushita's. 
Beautiful. Spirit Endeavors, 1949. Of all nine years he spent have been with the company, director Matsushita. Masaharu could feel the energy of 1949 was singularly exuberant. Perhaps it was the crowding of Matsushita uh, Electric's office by new employees, freshly demobilized. Perhaps it was the promise of greater capital with funds and redirected from wartime use to peace of investment. Or perhaps it was the promise of new opportunities in an Asia freshly liberated from the West and asking to be rebuilt anew among the ashes of Japan's holy war. It was all that anyone could talk about at the board meetings as everyone reveled in the exuberance of victory. No matter how familiar Masuharu had become with the Sokken accent, he had trouble keeping up when the excellent excitement reached such a pe fever pitch. As wild ideas for our outpace uh, rationality. There needs to be priorities, Masushita Konosuke silenced the board with a single interjection. Is there an expansion plan that we can discuss? <clears throat> China really is the only choice. No other market can match its size right now. Uh, aside, resources and unavailable labor, Masaharu said, prefacing a statement with a performative cough, he instantly felt the attention of the room turn to him, a spotlight worthy of his first ventures into the business history. Within China, the government's discussions on opening Guangdong province, the most populous and prosperous part of China, to Japanese business is an unprecedented opportunity. Please refer to the materials. As Masaharu walked the board through this presentation, he glimpsed Konosuke's wry smile out of the corner of his eye. Fortune favors the bold. So this one decreases our seats by one, get more growth, decreases Japan's approval as well as Japanese expat support, but gets a lot more interest, or gives space to the other corporations. Decreases our seats. Well, <coughs> adopts new subcontractors. Masashita needs to run as efficiently as possible. To the same, we begin hiring several subcontractors to help us out. However, we find ourselves at an impasse. We must choose between our current course of hiring Japanese companies or allow Zushin select Zushin companies that in, that is. Such a matter must be resolved before we can go uh, begin collaboration with them. Democracy returns to Italy. Well, that's nice for those guys. Uh, Economy-wise, though, ooh, we still have a deficit. Growth is okay. Debt to GDP ratio is kind of high. Um, kind of surprised we've not gotten involved. In, oh, I guess the war has not started, so that's why I've not gotten involved. So overall, not two shabarinos. 1933, brief memory. Early autumn. Chill winds blew seaward, rattling the wooden boards off the house. Clear sky, faint clouds wide against the open blue. The breeze swept the dead leaves outside like a broom lashed to a whip. Lamb remembered the circle of relatives among whom he sat. A smell of freshly fried mantu wafted from the center. He remembered the words they traded over bun dunk. Buns dunked in condensed milk. <coughs> long ago, long ago, said a relative. When the land team of the barbarians and wars raged, our folk forded the rivers, climbed the mountains, saw the sea, and on brocades they sued the silk. And went as far as Rome, then the emperors in gold ordered us westward towards the expanse. I know, he said, chewing mouthfuls of crunchy bun tinged with sweet milk. Con grandfather told me that already. Uncle wouldn't stop labbering about it either. Laughter proceeded. <coughs> Uh, someday, the uncle said, someday you'll work in the family business, threading the patterns you do, uh, and, the, and the Chao Zhu style, where you wander, people will know, oh, him, they will say. He's from Chao Zhu, ah, that's young, are you ready? He nodded, yes, uncle, I'll be ready, he gave a smile. I promise many sweet times, on book about the forces of time. Whichever I owned for, my bad. <coughs> We're ready for the product cycle. Well, pro honestly, probably not. But we'll do the best we can. Probably. Nice, just in time for that one. Uh, if... Evaluate local graduates. Let's see, you get more base, research speed for all, everybody. Uh, academic base begins to improve, increase Zhujin government support, and get a school and 5% more quality, um, minimum and maximum quality. Modern Japanese universities get 1% more every, every place, but you get more Japanese expat support and increases Japan's approval just by 15. Ooh. But I want Zhujin support. Where are we at right now for support? 69% is not good enough, honestly. 59% is pretty decent. You know what? As much as I want the school and more support here, I think I'll go monitor Japanese universities. And many Japanese students into the Guangdong will surely bring in many advantages that our administration needs to survive. The pace at which our technologies would develop would be increased. In addition, the arrival of these students will almost certainly shore up our approval with the Japanese elite of Guangdong, something we desperately need to be consistent of all times. Uh, we want uh, these guys the most? Oh, you betcha. Alright, let's see what things we can be cooking up here. We want the TC96G Saga, Saga, Sega, Home color TV, full color display or event, stylish television design. Oh my god, the interest and quality is god awful. Jesus, that's so bad. Anyways, um, show target markets. Ooh, can we sell? We can't sell to Germany yet. I'm so excited, yeah. Product investments as well as quality. So we're going to continue to do this one, so we'll increase the support regardless. We'll do that one too. We'll do this one. Um, we could do these, but. Don't want, I definitely don't want any more corruption. 
And I don't want lower support anywhere else, so. Well, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, we could do that one, but I don't want to lower any more support for now. It's already pretty low. Nice. Test it rigorously, and we'll get, those events will come back again and again and again and again, hopefully. <coughs> hopefully we'll do well. Because no one really wants to do poorly, probably. So we're at 19%, 30%. We're getting there. Yeah, modern or Japanese universities, that'd be good. 1930, 4430, not bad. Um, yeah. We could. How, how much approval do we have from uh, these guys? We have a good amount of approval still. Don't want to burn it, though. We need more Chinese approval, too. So we'll wait. I'll let the Camp I Tie try this out. But that's corruption, too. Oh, and there they go. We could. I, I just don't. No corruption. No corruption. No corruption. No. I want as least corruption as possible. So now we can probably get involved in Indonesia, which when I play as a Sony's path, is honestly not that great for us. But whatever. A test site close to home. Um, if you want to do this, please go. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I read this one yet. Had Indonesia always been that unstable? Ponder Matsushita Masaharu. This finger is constantly tapping against his desk. He didn't remember being on the verge of civil war, yet the country has evolved into a mess right in front of his eyes. But also Japan. So it was certainly going to be a black eye on the sphere, but a fresh conflict meant new testing grounds for the PTRG. He picked up the receiver and dialed the number of mil several military commanders stationed back in Japan. Much to his expectation, the PTRG was given significantly more freedom and resources to operate with. Losing control of Indonesia was bad enough as is, but if the rebel rebels managed to find a way to overthrow Sukarno's government, the fallout will be disastrous. That is for the Empire of Japan. Guangdong has always been a stand about turning a profit, and war was no different. The chief executive picked up several reports from the PTRG team, detailing new armor prototypes that the companies had sent in recently. With the expertise of the scientists in both the PTRG and the companies, and a little bit of luck to extend Indonesia's incoming civil war, uh, and Guangdong will be able to collect all the data needed in order to make a decision which product to support. If anything, he could use the comparison between the base IJ units and the uh, PTRG unit to drive up the sale price even more when he sold the prototypes back to the mainland. Feeling to provide the protest worthiness would negatively impact Guangdong's financial and political standing. Thankfully, Guangdong has no tolerance for failure whatsoever. Matsushita or Hitachi? Of course, we're going to go with uh, Matsushita. Cool. Nice tank, dude. I don't want to send uh, this division over because it's our actual other tank. So. You know, I'm going to send you anyways, just because we've already sent you once. Um, mm -hmm. Nice. Ah, there it is again. Just going to keep an eye out for it. Honestly, just go and do that one. We have a small political power. You might as well do that for now. <coughs> we can't handle the truth. Uh, the defendant's called to the stand. I repeat, the defendant's called to the stand. Said the judge between the liberal use of the gavel and the yelling from the stand. Yet the man changed from wearing Kenpai Tai khakis to colored gray inmates uniform still remained. Or remained still. I won't repeat myself, so the judge move or be moved. The prisoner's head arced up, upward slightly. Contempt of court, too, I'm guessing. That's up to you. I would be ashamed if I was given anything less by this pack of traitors. Alright, for your narcotics trafficking, treason, and contempt of court, then are you aware of the magnitude of the charges you now face? You know authority to charge me with any such crime, said the ex Kempai Tai man. No one in this Tim excuse of a nation has, I refuse to accept the judgment. Of men who have changed or exchanged a veneration of the Emperor for that of the Yem, I demand an audience of my peers. They gave you to us, said the judge, and I'll prosecute your. A large wad of saliva hit the judge square in the forehead. The courtroom exploded in fur as a bailiff dragged the prisoner back beyond bars. Order, order, order. Maybe that's a thing, a sign of things to come. But whatever, we're here in Indonesia. We're ready to rustle some jimmies. But, uh, we're gonna monitor them. Well, Matsushita appliances in every household. We decrease one of our seats. We get a lot more stuff here. Decreases in approval. I don't want to decrease them. You know what? We're gonna lose a seat anyway. Oh, man. So down here, you get more Japanese expat support and growth. Right now, we're gonna lose seats anyways if we keep growing. If we get 39, we can still compromise with other ones, right? The costs associated with letting other corporations participate in our investment are too large compared to the, any benefit that can be gained. Matsushita cannot afford to let other firms use this opportunity to compete. It must only be used for it and it alone. While they may send letters of protest and frustrate our efforts whenever possible, this initiative will cement Matsushita's leading company Guangdong. Contract question. Matsushita. 
Status desk staring at <clears throat> two piles of documents he was compiling. It was well until the second glass of sake, and yet there was no closer to figuring out the answer to his problem. Who'd hire? Recently, the administration ended a deal with a Japanese contractor. Bankruptcy, thanks to the Asuda crisis, was to blame. And this election of the replacement fell upon Matsushita's shoulders. The answer to the issue would usually be simple, except Matsushita received an info about potential choices from the Zujin company. While the Zujin and Japanese contractors had their benefits, the Japanese would normally be the best and only choice. Not only were they reliable and respectable, they were Japanese. Choosing the Japanese would not only be a profitable choice, much of the administration would work with Matsushita. On the other hand, Matsushita has heard of the good reputation the Zujin firms have. The Zujin were known to be hardworking and inexpensive, and the status as a bridge between the Japanese and Chinese in Guangdong serves as a connection to the people of the state. Choosing the Zujin would be a prevalent option in the face of the civilian popular support. Matsushita sighed and went on to take another sip. He suddenly looked at his glass, a wave of irritation forming within him. As much as he enjoyed it, sitting around sipping sake all day wasn't going to solve his problems. He had to choose between the two groups, but who to pick? Go to the Japanese, the Zaibatsus will be satisfied. Go to the Zujin, we needed the support of the locals. Actually, this gives you more growth. Uh, where are we at for support for now? And where are we at for this? 68 days left. Uh, we're middling an average right now, which is not great, but whatever. Um, so we're here at 69 still. That's not great. Zushin's almost 60%. That's not bad. Increases Japanese support by that much. I like, don't want getting another seat because we're going to lose a seat. And we'll lose the support here. Uh, go with that one for now. 70%. Not bad. The Indonesian summons. Um, if you want to read about this, I'm pretty sure I've read this before, so I'll let you go ahead and read it if you want. About the Indonesian summons. Whatever, 1% less is whatever. Oh, where are we at? Nice. Ah, so you're here. So you just need to go out and have fun. That's all you need to do. Charismatic recovery rate, sure, why not? Nice. Alright, over here. Alright, not bad. We'll do it one more time there. Because now we're out of political power. That's going to increase our support. That's why we raised it a little bit more, too. Um, so it should be okay overall. 40, 54, and 45. Nice. Good job so far. This for that. Now we're really out of political power. Well, Gota used to feel untouchable. His pilot are saying that Indonesians could never pierce, while his gunner dealt retribution with the hails of bullets. Then his corps was given the privilege of testing Masashita's newest invention, an auto to loaded and missile. It was vigorously lauded by Norfolk's added supervisor as a tremendous increase to the tank's firepower. But he neglected to mention that with increased ammo came at the expense of most of the armor. Although the gunner was delighted by the explosive spectacle, Gota watched a single stray shell emulate another tank in his unit. Gato tried to clear his mind of fear, knowing that the loss of focus was not fatal. As it does so, Gato breathed a sigh of relief. Another battle was over, and then his tank and life were miraculously still intact. The enemy fortification was annihilated. Only ash and rubble remained. He might have accelerated had he not glanced back and seen the charged steel remnants that led to the battlefield. Frowning Gato, or Gota, returned to formation and began trundling back to base. Back in his office, the corporate supervisor smiled with glee as he read the reports. Recent performance uh, surpassed all expectations. By all metrics, that created was a success. The higher-ups would be pleased. The barracks were stifled by silence. Nice. So now where are we, where are we at? Are we still middling? No, it was great and high. That's good. I'll keep it open and figure out where we really want to sell to soon. Uh, I don't really want to load engineers either. I don't think that, that would be in our best interest right now. Growth, give space. Uh, I want to do that one, but I don't want to lower it. So, well, the next thing you would do would probably increase Japanese expat support then. Nice. 
establish greater connectivity. The most important aspect of any business is connection. That allows for streamlined communications and transportation of goods and services, therefore. It's absolutely necessary that we invest in improving Guangdong's current infrastructure. The old dirt and stone paved roads of a bygone era are simply no longer suffices for the required connections of today. This investment, though it may be costly, will surely ensure that we, um, we eventually could add our progress above our rivals and provide us with long-term profitability. Oh, crap. How many more days left? 28, not bad. Naval stuff? Oh, you know me. We here, we are naval buddies. We are the Navy. Oh, there goes the rift here. Oh, this is getting higher and higher. That's not good. There's one here too. Uh, how many more days left now? We have 17 days. So 19. Oh. Maybe I should not have clicked on that one. Quality will increase. Yeah, maybe I should not have clicked on that because that's already 99. That was a waste. So maybe we go back down here and do a different one down here instead. I might need to reload this save just a little bit. Uh. You know, what, let's read this one first. Muscle sheet appliances in every home. A blinding, blinded world. Nice job, guys. <coughs> and oh, where are we at? This is Wong Guy Hei, he thinks. She looks up to see a large mural depicting a half, half, half family. Her eyes traverse through the scene, a woman, the mother, she thinks, is scooping rice from a rice cooker. Then she looks down and bears a strange triangular logo of Matsushita. A man pushes her, breaking her. When she thinks that no one's looking, Gaia, hey, takes a moment to stretch. He flows back into her arms, giving much needed energy for work. She's been feeling tired lately, like a comet burning up in the sky, or some would say. It's almost lunchtime, she thinks, two or three minutes away, turning to the TV. It's playing yet another Matsushita ad. Something about a new model, something about a transforming homes and lives and nothing but pure happiness. It's bland, boring, it's been long overdone, shaking her head. Guy Hey turns back, nothing of value is lost. Almost where the heart is, Guy Hey thinks. She wonders if it's still standing out there in Hunan, if her sister and dog still live there. Her train of nostalgia stops suddenly cut off by the door to her apartment opening. Guy Yi, she calls out, walking over to him. He holds some sort of post, or probably some sort of drawing from school. The boy comes over to her, and she takes his paper from him. She opens her mouth to praise him, then stops as her eyes begin fully processing what it is. Another darn Matsushita advertisement. Just at this past day, she's seen tens of these posters painted over every darn wall in the city, blinding lights advertising all these displays. <coughs> Suddenly, she puts down her poster. I'm nothing else. It'll save her some work cleaning the table. On is an advertisement for some kind of cleaning machine. Looking at it once more seems useful, but she knows these kinds of advertisements well. They always overstate how good a certain item is, but maybe Matsushita products are better. A straight thought blurts. Maybe there was good as this advertised. Maybe Matsushita didn't annoy her though. TC96G SATA Color TV. I'll show it to let you know. Um we did move it over and we went to sell in Chile. Or Chile. So um we did really well. Incredible. Incredible. I'm not sure I got up to hundred here though. I didn't I made sure we were at only ninety nine. And we were at like eighty percent, not ninety nine ninety five percent, but whatever. It's not perfect, not realistic, it's not even pleasant to look at yet. It's the future, and you'd be a fool to think that the future was warm, comforting experience. Just as a trans million steps, with a frozen silence and unpromising lack of resources, face a new challenge for our settlers, so do the virtual frontiers of technology. Do not be fooled. Color is a frontier, and every frontier must be tamed before it's settled. The disappointing screen size betrays its promises. Contrasted to its monochrome adversaries, it is admittedly pitiful. Also, she doesn't expect the TC-96G to be a wild success. Um, it's far too expensive for the common or purchase and far too small for the affluent to consider switching their behemoths to their design. Maybe the design's only purpose is to crawl and perish in the elephant's graveyard of historical novelty. Yet, if it does, its sacrifice will not be in vain. It is only the beginning of a new age. Masashita's enemies will look at the TC 996 g with envious eyes. Within days, they will work on every, their very own design, promising to outdo them in every grander ways. But it won't matter because by then, Matsushita will be one step ahead for every feat reached by Hitachi or Sony. Matsushita choose three because the TC 96 g isn't a TV, it's a promise. A promise to tame the unknown, so... Holy crap. Reaching 89.5% when averaging interest and quality and product profitability reaching 128%, we begin the following effects. We get two more seats. A little less than 3% real growth over almost roughly 7% GDP growth and 1.4 billion in miscellaneous income. Beautiful, my friends. A blinding, blinding, blinded bl world. Yeah, I heard that one earlier. There you go. Um, but... Nice. We're doing quite well, I'd say. I like this one, or that one earlier, so I'm going to go through that. 
and then open up our natural riches. Guangdong's land of potential opportunities, um, and nowhere is that more clear than directly beneath the surface. Endless deposits of tungsten, iron, and coal are stretched all across the nation, untapped riches simply waiting for adequate exploitation. It is no doubt that the corporations of Guangdong must be approved to utilize these natural resources and riches accordingly and soon. Matsushita hits the airwaves. The Matsushita tape recorder was truly a splendid device and undoubtedly one of the best recorders on the market. With an almost unmatched clarity of sound, the Matsushita could store hours of conversation and reproduce their every word, preserving these complex discussions for the time and memorial. In other words, it was a politician's nightmare. You know, we made a TV. Yet in the Chilean chamber of deputies, where parties seemed to split like splintering wood, where arguments exploded over the simplest of topics, there was no method better for keeping track of the chaos in the tape recorder. But it's upon the desk of the chamber secretary, the new technology allowed for every debate to be scratched into polyester and sent out through the radios for all of Chile to hear. Certainly many politicians hated it. As the limousines drove down the winding streets of Santiago, they listened to the car radios and heard the disagreements splattered in the airways like bugs on the windshield. Then, usually, they tell the driver to turn it off. But the citizens of Chile loved it, so strongly that not even the most irritated deep deputy could disagree. Far from in the north to the uh, icy plains of Patagonia, the people found another window into the lives of their politicians into that mess of Santiago that occupied everyone's attention. They knew just a little more about the world, or the nation, warts and all. A man in Chile knows more than a man in Guangdong ever will. Oh boy. Maybe for now, but probably forever. Not bad. So now we have... Quite a surplus. The growth is very good. Net to GDP ratio is not bad either. So a little bit of inflation, but you know, when do you not have inflation? Less corruption, more Zhujin support. I think that'd be great. All right. So the region of Guangdong. So now we're still at 59%. Not bad. 47.6% is not bad, and 69.56. Nice. This is going up. How high is this going up? One more. Um. I think I read this one before, so if you want to read this one, please go ahead. About lamb. We just need more political power. But we always need more political power. I'm going to get some of this too. But in stormy or rainy conditions, huh? Are you learning anything here? <coughs> Not so much right now, no. 65% and 38%. Oh, you just destroyed the unit. Holy crap. We're just like, get out of the way. If you like to read about advancements in power, efficiency, technology, please go right ahead. Very nice. Very, 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 very nice. Cool. And household electronics, too. Good job, Matsushita. Wales unifies with good old England. Uh, three evils. Anything else here? No. Product cycle. Oh, it's, we just got another thing done. No, we're okay. Cool. Keep the cogs running. The economy of the nation appears to be uh, in a consistent pattern. Surge after surge, rocketing towards success as such. It's necessary that we provide sufficient oversight as to ensure that this new economic paradigm be allowed to continue to prosper and retain its upward course. If the economy continues to progress, we may soon begin to satisfy our ambitions of industrial growth. Nice. Zushin so supporting even more Japanese expat support, which is, you know, pretty necessary too. Honestly, these guys will have it. Uh, I'm not sure anything worth going over there. Probably getting a little worse, but whatever. Oh, it's just for here. 20, 30. Oh, that's looking very good for the police. Holy crap. Macau's looking rough-ish. Rough for the police, rough for the police, rough for the police. So we're, it's not looking great here, but what is it working in progress? That barely made us go up at all. Infantry weapon, 68. Good weapon. And we'll buy it by two, which is nice. It's expensive, but at least it's nice. Alright, so. Holy crap, how, how, are they winning that well? Jesus. Alright, well. I'm not sure how much testing we can actually get done. We'll do the best we can, but. Holy smokes. Smoking holies. <coughs> Growing pains, 1954. President Matsushita Masaharu sighed warily as he opened the front door, loosening his tie while Sachiko hurried to take over his suit. The cotton fabric seemed to cling stickily to his shoulders before Sachiko's fingers cooled to the touch, released Masaharu from his set. 
a sartorial prism. I'll never get used to this heat, Matsushita gas, dropping into a seat in the living room. All the fans do is circulate hot air. Maybe you should do like the other gentleman in Koshu and stop wearing the suit and tie, Sachiko said, before placing a fridge glass of beer before Masaharu. Fresh from the new Matsushita refrigerator, the work to get into the company going is more important than what you wear. I still have to look the part, Matsushita growled, before downing the offered beer in a single gulp, but you're right, if I'd been here for five years without a single factory product, I'd be a darn fool, no matter how hard it is working with the locals. Father wouldn't have let you stay if he was, thought this was a losing investment. Sachiko smiled while refilling Masaharu's glass, I'm sure he's excited about the air conditioner you're finishing. Finally finishing. Masuharu was ap appended uh, suddenly. He received fewer calls from Osaka. There was no doubt Masushita Sr. was getting tired of hearing every detail of the company's growing pains, but the unspoken pressure to deliver something remained. He called Osaka once the cost estimates for the production models were complete, Masuharu thought. He'd much rather deliver good news for once, hopefully while basking in the relaxing breeze of Masushita's gift to Guangdong. S success has come from hard work, not dreams. Drill, baby drill. Mr. Masushita. There are terms we must discuss in terms of a contract, said Sadao. His face quickening towards the chief executive. Masashita sighed and let the representative catch up. Mr. Masashita. While we at Mitsubishi mining are grateful for the cooperation of your cabinet, there are a few key issues with the conditions of a proposal. Masashita furrowed his brow. He knew the conditions of the contract would be a problem for the Zabatsu. Mitsubishi was notorious for its working conditions, especially in China. I'm aware of the issues of your company with, has with our terms, but I must remind you these are the terms that we agreed upon and I have no intention of changing them last minute. The representative was clearly taken, or clearly irritated by Matsushita's decision. I understand, sir, but paid medical leave, increases in worker salaries, shorter work hours, this will make our whole operation very unprofitable, said Sadao. Our accounts here at Guangdong took the liberty of calculating the new cost of investment for your government, given the expense of your terms. The representative handed Matsushita a paper, which he glanced through quickly. Matsushita's eyes widened at the form. The new investment amount demanded was much more than double than what was agreed upon. Mr. Sadao, I'm not even sure if the Guangdong Treasury has this much money, croaked Matsushita. Well, then it seems to be mutually profitable for our two parties that renegotiate the terms of our contract. Matsushita paused for a moment. It would be cheaper now to remove the terms, and we put the government on the good side of one of the sphere's largest corporations than the other. To remove the terms would mean facing the already disgruntled native populace. Very well, I'll re rewrite the terms of our agreement and have it in by tomorrow. Both will increase. Increase vision and Chinese support. So, with the terms agreed upon are non negotiable. Good day. I still want to get more Chinese support, too. Like, that's still something we've got to do here. So, 40%, that's not bad. Keep them cogs turning, though. As we will do... What is this one? Oh, crap. It's lagging. Demolition of the Old Order. The aftermath of the Yasuda crisis had impacted everyone in Guangdong in one way or another. And it's imperative that we safeguard the nation from ever having to suffer from, suffer from a th similar situation. The pre-crisis gu Guangdong it was very much extremely inefficient. Its business team, bureaucracy, and useless legislation contributing to the anguish of the crisis. We need to begin ridding ourselves of the construction of the past and begin anew. The process of the disposure and the sale of unproductive and fruitless assets shall begin soon. The leftovers. Safe and sound. A thick pile of papers and documents rests neatly upon the sumptuous wooden desk of the chief executive, bearing the recent financial reports of the major corporations of Guangdong. Matsushita began opening the beige envelopes in his usual gentle manner, and his facial expression was composed and indifferent, after all. Just another procedural inspection. Within his mind, however, he was far from placid. His emotions flew around his head like a kaleidoscope of butterflies, brimming with ecstasy and relief. So th this was the accumulation of his efforts, confirmation that he had managed to achieve something that his predecessors were never able to achieve, economic stability. As he read through the numbers of each corporation with attentiveness, he could not help but smile. The patrons would adore the favorable figures and projections. A steady rise in profits and sales was shared equally among the firms. The businessmen were satisfied, and the only thing that mattered, of course, as long as their graphs and charts continued to project upwards. They would be docile. He now had no reason to continue his initiative of a direct adjustment. He had accomplished enough, and the ailing system had been corrected. Masushita laid back in his chair and poured himself a cool glass of a sake. It was worthy, he thought. His leadership had proven to be fruitful. The reins of power rested firmly within his hands. An accomplishment, one of many. Seizing dead firms' assets, the crisis left many struggling firms and businesses un unable to continue under the stressful and devastating situation, and their husks uh, now litter the streets and records of Guangdong. We will begin the confiscation of abandoned and discarded properties in order to prepare them for the sale in the near future in order to raise money to keep the market in circulation. Very, very nice. We're probably not going to profit that much from this war. Hello. What is this? Ah. There goes Muscovine. Getting replaced by another type of Muscovine. A different Muscovine. Ah. <coughs> hmm. France enters into an uncertain fate.
Good, good, good. Not in a conditions. Jungle conditions, river crossings. The leftovers. The user to crisis when the sky seems seemingly collapsed. Upon the livelihoods of every person in Guangdong, regardless of their position, wealth, or status, Masashi remembers those days fondly, or him scrambling to secure the assets of his company, hours upon hours of planning and deliberation, culminating in his ascendancy above the debris of countless businesses and investments. The tumultuous collapse of the once soaring skyscraper of Yasuda caused collateral damage to the surrounding firms, leaving behind an enormous accumulation of bricks and concrete materials and begging to be reused. Masashi would clasp his hands together and find out over the numbers and value of the dormant. Uh, capital scattered across Guangdong. Abandoned properties and businesses with lucrative potential, awaiting state seizure. He would organize an auction, award the assets to whoever offers the most, ultimately benefiting both parties, however. Masashida knew that he could not simply give away any substantial profits to his economic competitors, after all, he still represented the interests of a single corporation. He swiftly reached for a list of abandoned assets and circled numerous items that were considered by him to be of strategic importance to Masashida Electric. Writing beside them the exact amount of cash that is to be bid by the corporation, he would not allow a valuable entity to slip away from his grasp. Masashita reached for the telephone resting neatly upon his desk, and alerted the police to begin operations. He would firmly clutch this opportunity. The ultimate beneficiary would have to be Matsushita. The vulture would begin to circle. Just one. Hiroshi Yamauchi uh, stood in front of a table of representatives from Matsushita Electric, presenting various electronic products such as vacuum cleaners, rice cookers, TV sets, and more that Nintendo could pick up and make in order to secure a large endowment from the company and drive Nintendo's fortunes up to the sky as he finished his presentation. Yamauchi felt nervous. None of the representatives seemed enthused or even particularly engaged with any of the products that he proposed. Clearing a lump in his throat, Yamauchi broke the silence that had filled the room after his presentation ended. So, gentlemen, what do you think? He groveled to the representatives. Well, your plans aren't all that exciting, but we feel that there may be potential to what you're proposing. We're ready to move forward with all the production of one of those products for now. Then we'll see what's happening, if it succeeds or not. Now, if you may excuse us. The head representative replied, getting out of his seat upon sighing a... Signing a paper and gesturing for the other representatives to leave with him, as the man sat, left the room, Yamauchi got up to gather all the documents he had given out and tidying it up. It wasn't what he expected, but it was good enough that they even got a deal in the first place. But it wasn't even the right choice to make a move into the consumer electronics, he thought as he exited the room. It's a big jump for us, hope we can make it. We'll see. Favor the Japanese. Uh, if we do the Japanese a favor, and the investment in Guangdong will mul multiple tenfold. More approval, more Japanese expats support. Lose Zhujin support, though. Keep control. Guangdong's asked for Guangdong's and Master Sushi is alone. Makes it more risky, which influences the results. So this one, we still have enough seats. A cleaner bankruptcy code will benefit everybody and allow us to collect our share as quickly as possible. Better take our share than be caught being too greedy. Take all we can. Manipulate the process. The process of running Guangdong's <coughs> finances is to be conducted via a fair and transparent bidding process in accordance with the free market principles that have served as the foundation of Guangdong's economy since its inception. Chief Executive Masashita is well aware of the obligations that come with the position his own interest as CEO of the Matsushita Electric in Guangdong notwithstanding. It's also always been true that the bending of the public interest to serve private ends is a firmly established practice in Guangdong, allowing Yasuda's political and economic influence to grow like a cancerous growth in the years preceding its collapse. While well, Matsushita is eager to avoid the steps of Yasuda's downfall, he's not so devoted to principles so easily uh, foregoing an opportunity to shore up his political competitive, competitive position by making sure Matsushita holds the best assets at the end of the auction. Nice. Yeah, we're looking definitely better there, though. How many more days? We got 162, is not bad. Actually. Ah, there you go. And there you go. It's a jungle. Are you not learning how to be fighting hot train? I guess not. Tabloid phenomenon. Secrets of evil. Kempate officer admits a shocking deal with the Chinese narcotics peddlers. Ooh. Lone wolf Colonel Miyazaki denies all involvement with a rogue agent, complicit or incompetent. Protect your citizens, not your wallets. Blood salaries in Washington streets with drugs. Is this what you want your taxes spent on? Thousands of tons of Manchurian shipping arrive every day. How many are drug ships? Betrayal. Who polices the military budget? Or police? Commissioner promises uh, crime sweep. No comment from Kempate. More on page three. Wow. Oh no, this is it. No, this is jungle still. That oh, sucks. So we need an economic check soon. 26.37 billion. Ah, oh, we'll be there. 
Uh, the embers are extinguished. Li Ho Yin proceeded down the street, crowded and congested streets of Goshu. The brilliant and vibrant rays of the orange sun illuminated his weary pace as dusk gradually approached. Beats of sweat formed and flowed down his neck and he sped across the cracked concrete. The sidewalks upon his worn bicycle, barely avoiding oblivious of pedestrians and bystanders as he pedaled past him with the haste of a gazelle. A tender smile rested upon his lips, noticeable even through his obfuscating, fatigued, panting, and heavy respiration. Though thoughts raced across uh, Leo's cloud of minds to reminisce about days gone by in the little humble restaurant nestled between two apartment blocks, where he had once observed his father prepare warm bowls of soup and hearty plates of dumplings, a sincere smile always adorning his face as he greeted his customers with cordiality. It wanted to, to, to continue the business, to resume the endless amounts of joy that his father brought to so many people, but alas, his dream was cut short. Well, the crosses descended upon Guangdong and scythe, slaughtered the livelihoods of millions of citizens, including his own. He continued to allow his mind to wander as he approached the former side of the restaurant. As the situation improved, he hoped he could revisit the place where so many of his early memories were made, perhaps one day he revive it. He opened his mouth in astonishment, aghast and distraught. He felt as if a pounding of bricks had just collapsed under his spirit, shattering it into a million irredeemable pieces, displaced fragments of vitality and resolve that would never be amended. Hope in his heart, once a blossoming elegant rose, serene and sin uh, scintillating, and now wilted and shriveled in an instant, his vivid crimson petals weathering into desiccated husks of something that once stood. Leo fell onto his knees and reread the words covering the signs of the restaurant. A single tear rolling down his cheek, seized in possession of the state of Guangdong. Are you seriously not even learning here? What's the point of doing this if you're not going to learn? Contingency. Uh, the golden last seeped his way through the blinds, landing soft on the face of Kono Miyazaki. The... The faintest in a calm in an ocean of administrative chaos. Several days of relentless giving and repeating orders, boxes being run back and forth between the paper shredder and the incinerator. Phone calls blaring IJA command in the Guangdong, Camp Ai Tai command in Tokyo, and all sorts of random jokers with enough influence to find his number. He hadn't had a good night sleeping all that time for the sake of his sanity. As it had to end soon, maybe some light sleep would help. Or some light would help. He opened up the blinds, a full view of the Koshu appearing before him, Miyazaki witnessed. Black stray dots bubbled their way through the streets amongst buildings whose size and regularity served to obfuscate any sense of meaning. Everything looked exactly as it did yesterday, and how it looked next month, and Miyazaki did not like what he saw. The first, <clears throat> and the best chance to rectify the situation with her to have I. Um, and the local branch were too busy with damage control to succeed alone. So much for his career, but no use putting it off. He picked up the phone, dialed, sinking. Miyazaki says, come tell me of your failure, you, and our need to clean it up after your mess. Miyazaki, is it? Oh, yeah. Miyazaki considered arguing, they thought better of it. Yes, sir. Well, lucky you boy that you are. We already have a contingency in motion, working with, from within this time. An amount of money. We'll be sent to you shortly, making sure it ends up in the right hands. Yes, sir. Hey, investments are not under video technology? Nice. Now, well, if we can get over here, that'd be great. At least he's learning, I guess. Still. Crown does where it doesn't belong. A 10% uptick in robberies, 12% in stolen cars, 15% in assaults, 8% in murders. Miyazaki coolly read the statistics from the memory, standing at the side when Nagano looked on. As your, this is despite your orders of increased police presence in the area, Chief Executive. The evidence shows that they have not performed very well. <coughs> it's a fluctuation in a difficult to control area, uh, Matsushita Masaharu countered. His frustration bowling as healthily as ever. Those two were, uh, were twin demons that could never seem to shake. They could never sh seem to shake. Crime has fallen, a one time increase should not be taken as a sign to throw off the work of my men out entirely. Will you tell the widow of a poor Japanese soul that her husband's murder was a result of a fluctuation? Nagano remarked, now moving us from the chair. <coughs> Another sigh from the chief executive. Any Japanese man in this city should know better than go walking alone through dangerous neighborhoods, particularly Chinese ones. We cannot fully count for stupidity. Of course, I'd prefer to say they stay in the safe neighborhoods as well. Nagano stood, crossing the aisle, and yet I find shrugging your shoulders to be an unacceptable as a response. The locals, seeing as your police cannot control other neighborhoods, have asked for their camp by to up their security around their own area. If you find that unmoving, then I'm sure Tokyo will feel quite similar. Fine, Jonah, have your f have your fun. Do whatever it takes to be successful here. Stretching alliances. The day's wave of endless uh, tide of intrigue and whispers from within the Legislative Council, certain, the, certain shifting loyalties of certain lawmakers. Three faces of the events from the usual caucuses and three had in turn appeared in Hitachi's contingent. Soon all the whispers were asking the same questions. How much could Hitachi pay them? They asked each other. It was an inevitable question. The men in question had so abruptly crossed the aisle that something had to have lubricated the shift in their mind. How much can I get for myself? Where do I look? They asked themselves. The sh tide shifts once more. Crap. Investigate the accounts. The number, record number of uh, Leko seats. The members are pledging their allegiance to Hitachi. Despite the company's record books looking completely normal. Perhaps the second pass will reveal more uh, uh, potential discrepancies. 
If cash is working Guangdong, threats of violence are another tried and true method of convincing Leko members to align with their visions on Hitachi's. And to who can always play the game of bribery in Guangdong, whatever Hitachi's intentions may be. We can uh, shift a little cash to certain Leko members to get them back on our side, if not Hitachi's. We'll definitely do that one. How much approval do we have? 80%. I don't want to. If it goes below 70, uh. I definitely don't want any more corruption. I just do not want any more corruption. 5% is so good. <coughs> Screw it, we'll do this one for, for now, though. I hate Hitachi so much. Right now, we only. We still have 41 seats. That's, that's pretty good, though. That's honestly very good. French victory down over there, huh? Jurisdiction and friction. The glares watchful and uniforms well pressed. The men of the camp Pate awaited their next order. They knew exactly what would follow. Every movement had been carefully choreographed weeks in advance. As knowledge of drugs being stored in the location had been withheld from the police for months, they certainly had more than enough time to drill the plan into themselves. Three sharp whistles blast later, confined cacophony was let loose. Bullets streaked in inflatably aimlessly out. The final shots of the gangsters were smothered by the charge of the camp Pate and silence returned to the street a great deal more than before. The hall from the south paraded the rows of peering eyes and now hid far behind from the street. The message had been made. The camp by tower of the law, nothing could be allowed to get in their way, not even the police. The police can only clean up after the camp by tie. Hmm. Pay the Japanese. I do want more approval. I don't want to stop lowering it. Keep control. Increases this. Yeah, we can do this one. How much support do we have from the Zujin? Yeah, that's pretty good overall. <coughs> Our struggle through these hardships wouldn't have lasted if not for the guidance and support of the Japan, or Japanese. We desperately need to regain favor and respect from the powers within our partner, and providing them with an advantage in the upcoming auction may be a surefire way to achieve the goal. After all, most investors are Japanese. So. This one's fine with me. 1938. Uh, if you were about 1938, please go ahead. Things would never be the same again. The midnight shift. Wong Kinyun appeared at... Uh, uh, appear innocuously delayed as he peeled away from the gaggle then coming off the factory floor. It was past 11 and the yawning security guards were keen as anyone else to hurry home on one of the days that the night shift was cut short mercifully. For 20 minutes, Wong waited as the throngs of workers dispersed. Until the last of the overseers heaved shut the factory door, shooting the floodlights off. As his eyes adjusted, Wong watched a few, a few men step back into the open. Lao, the welder, pulled together stools in the tight circle around an impromptu cardboard table. Chung, the machinist, laid out some bowls borrowed from the cafeteria. If the assembler groaned, is put down a mixture of platter of turnip cake, dumplings, and a few oranges. It was small, but it was free. It was well known that there would be nothing for them in their sparring company dormitory. And the cooks had understood, hiding the place in the kitchen or refrigerator for them to retrieve later. <coughs> Finally, Wong brought out his contribution, a smuggled bottle of cheap rice wine, lacking in everything but potency. The assembly company clapped quietly as Wong poured each man a small serving. On any other day, they were nameless cogs in the machine, taken from their homes and families in the country to feed the hunger of the three pearls. But for one night, under the faint red glow of the emergency lights, they could be a family of their own. Gong Hei Fak Choi. Take her tap dance. Lots of shootout malfunctions multiply, no end of sight. Crap. Fujito fumbles yet again. Sony sock slips and slides. Amongst the sensationalist headlines, there was an uncomfortable amount of truth. Reports from each of the three companies had carried a similar selection of disappointing returns over the last quarter. Uproar spread like a wildfire between the markets and media stock prices had taken a slump. Yet the same extent of this reversal of fortunes was not met by Hitachi, whose price had held firm while all, other, all others wavered. Soon another phrase appeared again and again in the headlines, a vote of confidence in the maturing quality. Perhaps it was luck, perhaps not, that did not matter. Guangdong had come to need any sense of hope from his business, no matter the place. Hitachi wins again. For now. Sitting in the bar, Matsushita stood alone, indifferent in expression in his mind, and got in silent contemplation. Solemn contemplation. The expansive room was adorned with violent cur velvet curtains and vivacious shades of dark crimson. Sumptuous. Uh, chairs draped in silky cloth were arranged in a semicircle around a single polished podium where the auctioneer would announce and allocate uh, the uh, prize assets. A cold breeze swept through the currently empty room, was soon to be filled with representatives of every major corporation in Guangdong, startling Masashiri to continue his ceaseless deliberation. How far should he take it? What should he prioritize? He saw a circle around his head, a dilemma of careers of interest. He paced intensely around the vacant chamber. He had to make a decision. The date of the auction was rapidly approaching, and his hesitation would lead him nowhere. He originally intended for the auction to heavily favor the interests of the Matsushita Electric. After all, his in interests were their interests. However, it became apparent that he would have to reconsider. The corporations and the legislative council were not na naive fools. Their eyes are sharp enough to pierce through thin and obvious veils, intended to obfuscate foul play. And it would certainly severely damage his stability of position within the legislative council, nonetheless. He would have to be decisive. He took a dark, deep breath as he reevaluated his position. Whether the benefit of his family and company or, of his, or standing within the council was more important to him, in the name of Matsushita or in the name of unity. Avoid unnecessary risks. 
0.05 billion. I kind of like the stability. I do like more stability though. We take all we can. Increase our seats. Influence the results. Sell, sell, sell. We're 50. Oh, this is going to be rough to try to do. We're going to lose it anyways. You know, we're going to avoid unnecessary risks. And I want the stability actually too. If we decide to engage in local tradition of Guanggong's politics, we must assume that our enemies, our esteemed competition, will do the same to us. They'll be watching our every move and tipping the scales of our first major initiative as chief executive. To our advantage, we'll not go unnoticed. We'll be risking our political position, so tenuous to begin with in the face of Sony Fujitsu, when we will undoubtedly have better opportunities in the future, and we will not tempt fate. We'll maintain a level playing field for our other auction, aside from taking advantage of any easy opportunities that present themselves. Soft targets. Representatives of the Legislative Council. I've never found themselves in any position than the defensive. <coughs> Whether for the corporation's interests or more importantly their own. Not a single back was safe from the many knives wielding hands among them. So, often the only defensive move left to play was to retreat. Resignation and letters had to be updated regularly for the moment the anxieties of the chambers could change in those of exile. The resignation is written on the back of the sharp white pa enter paper. Later the place no more than ever, yet another wave of losers had since been chased out of town and tailed between their legs. In fact, the only matter of the out, out of the ordinary was a number of Hitachi men being named as replacements. The eyes of the councils left standing were raised, along with their anxieties, as they no doubt planned on how to best save their own skins once again. Hmm. I want to do this one. I don't know, decrease corruption, but it's not even 12% yet, so we don't have to do that one yet. There are two still. God dang it. Oh, wait, but only 39 seats. Are you learning? You should at least be learning a little bit. Good. Learn. Learn. Favor them Japanese. Pattern recognition. Um, just drive, I don't care where, it could be Moscow if you want, as you wish, Chief Executive. The police commissioner looked out of the tinted windows towards Koshu Marino. Despite the best and brightest, uh, the Guangdong's efforts, the neon signs of clamor for attention from the millions of would-be customers and should have been regulars only contingent for that smog that smothered them. The inside of the car was nothing special, it was the same cream upholstery, same plush seats as what an aged salary man could expect to find in a taxi, of course. That's what made it peculiar at all, considering who, who was sitting, he was sitting beside. Commissioner, the chief executive, did not look at him. His head craned downwards to the mess of dossiers and files that lay at his feet. Too messy to have been organized by a secretary, at least a competent one. This was all him. When I first took off his job, I was told by my colleagues that this was a fool's errand. This is, the task of cleaning up the streets of our little corner of the world was a, a Sisyphean one. The police commissioner did not say anything, only nodding his head to signify they cut every word. That the walls of the door will be too strong to keep back at bay. Look at poor Suzuki. Best of my forces that he could not understand. When the place stopped spinning, the only thing they could do was fall, fall, fall to the ground. But I'm not Suzuki Taichi. I am, am I, Commissioner? The car stopped, making a gentle turn into a dense, dark alleyway, still idling, but now waiting for its master to fill its purpose. I'm not Suzuki Taichi, and I'm not one effing puppet that they can just cut the strings and leave me to die. His, his voice began to rise into a crescendo. I'm the chief executive, and I will put them down like the dogs that they are. We both know who they are, don't we, Commissioner? The police commissioner turned to face the chief executive and simply handed him a manila folder before unlocking the door to leave. Hitachi, chief executive, we're fighting Hitachi. We're fighting Hitachi. God dang it, we're fighting Hitachi. Uh, economic review. Chief Executive uh, Matsushita Masaharu leaned back in his chair, smiling faintly as Consul General Takashima Masuo took a seat opposite him holding the 1966 copy of Guangdong's economic data. They both knew the thick tome's contents in advance, and Takashima only made a curiosity show of idly turning its pages before sitting aside. So... Um, Guangdong has been all its economic targets for the last year, Takashima said, a wry smile tugging on his lips. Industrial output, factory investment, export revenues all indicated that the show of an economy performing at its best. Tokyo is very pleased. Chief Executive Mori uh, Mo uh, Matsushita Mor Masaharu <laughs> nodded, letting the Consul General's praise settle comfortably within him. Of course, Guangdong had met the expectations set out by for its stakeholders. Between his policies and efforts of the companies, Guangdong had proven it could perform economic alchemy, and it would do so for how long was required, of course. The two men talked for another 15 minutes, the two largely exchanging compliments and conversing in generalities about the coming year's economic initiatives. Uh, the meeting was on course to end early as the competition petered out with Takashima fiddling with his glasses waiting to be excused. Get back to work. Nice. Got more Japanese approval too, which is uh, kind of what we were shooting for too. Not bad. Out of the police. Ooh, this is actually what we're doing right now. Because you get more uh, government control. What are we doing here? National team. <coughs> um, the job would not been outlined as easy, managing investments on behalf of the chief executive, but sometimes Ren thought he and his team were up to the set to fail. Another effing drop? Uh, yeah, it happened almost an hour after we opened this morning. Multiple large sale orders by people we've not been able to contact. Yeah, though. My team is trying, though. It also triggered a number of other sale orders about an hour later, and we managed to keep the stock from dipping too low. But it's becoming too much to handle. The stock price, well, we won't be able to change, we won't be able to stand too many more short squeezes. I think we should get some extra help. 
You're telling me somebody's screwing with us, someone that wants our company to fail. Well, I can think of a few people that could want that to happen. Ren wiped his forehead, his office had gone too stuffy, and his suit clutched to him like a vice. Keep going. I can put this forward. All these silhouettes have been distracted at each major company in Guangdong, aside from Hitachi. I believe that Hitachi might be the ones behind the massive silhouettes that occurred this morning. The stock has been mostly untouched by these sell orders. Hitachi had always been vocal opponents against the chief executive and the company he represented. Ren should have seen this coming, it's too late to think about it. Sir, we have to make a choice to tell the team that we're going to request the treasure to intervene. Too much for us to handle. Hang on for as long as we can. I'm gonna do this one. Sell, 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 sell. Of all the investigative accounting has been completed, the legal paperwork for the uh, title transfer complete. We'll open the bidding for the assets seized in the aftermath of Yasuda collapse, taking the expense of maintaining the, the dead embers of Yasuda off of the state's books and allowing the corporation's best position to make the use of uh, breed life back into the economy. It's also true expression of the capitalist metabolism, a cycle, life cycle of capital, and it's time for, to, for it to take its course. And Guangdong scarves will receive a much needed shot in the arm. So, if you enjoyed the video though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. And see what else we can do with good old, good old, good old Masashita, Masaharu, and his electric company as we're fighting in Indonesia. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.